guys, it's D.I.D. Choi here today with another Logic 11 video, this time exploring Chroma Glow in a lot more detail. So Chroma Glow is a new saturation plugin that Apple has released, finally. It's great to have a native, dedicated saturation plugin in Logic Pro. But a lot of people, especially those that have only been using stock plugins so far and have never experienced saturation, don't really know what it is. And sometimes when you listen to demos in videos, you can't really hear a difference. It sounds the same a lot of the time especially if you're not listening with nice headphones and you know what you're trying to listen for. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the Chroma Glow plugin, explain a few of the different features in it, and show you different use cases and where in a signal chain you wanna put Chroma Glow for the best results. So jumping in, looking at Chroma Glow here, we have five different modules, right? We have Retro 2, Modern 2, Magnetic, Squeeze, and Analog Preamp. We also have beside that different styles, so clean and colorful, and this varies depending on which module you're on, but most of them are clean and colorful. I think it's just squeeze that is actually different, but yes, there are five different models and two different styles for each. There's a little bypass section here, which basically takes the signal that's coming into the saturator and filtering it so that, for example, the most common use case is filtering out the low frequencies. The saturation will only be happening in the higher part of the sound, which means it'll be a lot less muddy and there's going to be less frequencies conflicting in the middle of the sound and it'll be a little cleaner. I'll show you demos of that later on. The drive is basically the amount of the plugin, right? Lower drive means less saturation, higher drive means more saturation. Now this is different from the mix here, which, you know, I could say I have a hundred percent drive, which means that I'm getting a very fuzzy kind of sound, but using the mix, I can dial it back. So we have more of the original sound blended with the driven sound. Level in, level out is very useful for gain staging. Oftentimes, if you add frequencies in drive, the ending sound will be a little louder, so maybe you might want to compensate and take the level out down a little bit. And finally, we have a section down here with a high cut and a low cut, which is basically just an EQ filter. You know, you can do the slope, you can do the frequency and the resonance, same thing up here. But the only thing special here is you can adjust the pre and post of it. And this affects the entire sound, not just like the single sound, kind of like this bypass function does. If you cut the lows, the whole thing will sound like the lows are missing, right? And the difference is if you want to handle that pre going into the plugin or after the saturation has been applied. Looking on the Apple website, we have different explanations for what the different modules are. Retro 2 is basically adding warmth and even order harmonics. I'll show you what that looks like later. The modern tube is a more modern take on it. There's less muddiness, a little cleaner sound, but kind of an overall similar tone. Magnetic is basically an analog tape machine. It basically has a nice warm tone and feels pretty natural. I think tape is one of my favorite types of saturation. Squeeze is a slightly different one from all of the other ones because squeeze is actually the result of saturation coming from over compressing on an analog compressor. Right. So it's compressing while also adding harmonic distortion, which means it'll kind of sound fatter. I mean, all of these, you know, sound warmer, brighter, you know, there's all these buzzwords that mean different things to different people. But I would generally think squeeze would make things a little bit fatter, a little bit heftier, but you have to use it in moderation. Analog preamp finally is exactly that. It's mimicking an analog preamp. Maybe it's kind of like a Neve kind of style of thing where it kind of adds like nice overtones, but until you drive it a little harder, it's not as noticeable either. And you can read the different types of how the styles are going to be affecting these different modules in your own time. But going back to our demo here, first of all, I wanted to take a look at a sine wave and how the saturator affects the sine wave. So right now I have a sine wave at A3, which is 220 Hertz. So let's listen with the Chroma Glow bypass, and you'll notice just a little spike here at 220. Right, right there at 220. Great. Now, if I say go to Retro 2, turn it on, and I'm gonna slowly put the drive up. Notice what partials are added. change the style here let's try magnetic the tape So 
what you notice here is every other partial is accented, right? Here at 440, there's not that much sound, while at 660, there's a lot more. Here at 880, a lot less, you know, on and on. So these are the even number harmonics, right? It's kind of like, a, almost like a saw wave. And you can see the shape here kind of falling into that shaw shape. Right, and it's not a perfect saw, so obviously it's you don't see like the perfect little things, but so the tape saturation is a fairly even, even harmonic saturation, adding those harmonics onto it. Let's look at the analog preamp. So here you can see the, the wave is almost kind of more sine-like. It's a lot more pure. still more of the even harmonics are accentuated but the odd number harmonics are still fairly even proportionally okay let's take the squeeze now all right so this is very much more like a saw wave almost but up here you can see the partials you know other partials are being added here's the soft press very similar uh, frequency characteristic but the compression will be different Right, and I don't think we looked at modern tube, so let's take a look at that one too, starting with the clean. Again, a lot more of the even number harmonics. Ooh, this one's a very, it's very different, a lot brighter. So you get a lot higher frequencies coming in. So. That's how you can listen for saturation. I always love to start with a sine wave to see what it's actually doing. And then I like to add different examples. So one common type of saturation you might add is analog preamp. This is when you're using a microphone and maybe you don't have very nice analog preamps, but maybe you want to emulate that sound. In that case, I would add it first up in the single chain. So we have chroma glow right here in this vocal, right at the beginning. I have it set to analog preamp. I like I have it out in colorful. Here, I'll turn it off first. Turn the other chroma glow off as well. Listening to this vocal here, I don't consider myself a singer, but bear with me. Let's check out the new chroma glow plugin. It's brand new to Logic. Okay, now I'm gonna add the chroma glow. Let's check out the new Chroma Glow Plugin. So, listening to it with everything bypassed, this is the raw vocal. Let's check out the new Chroma Glow Plugin. It's brand new to Logic Pro 11. Okay, and with the plugin. Let's check out the new Chroma Glow plugin. It's brand new to Logic Pro. So there's an ever so slight amount of saturation in there. Right now, I also have 270 down bypass, which is what is allowing me to go all the way up to 45% without having oversaturated miss. Let's check out the new Chroma Glow Plugin. It's brand new to Logic. So this bypass function allows just the top part of my vocals. So not the fundamental, but more of the sibilins and the higher kind of airy sounds. Those sounds are the things that are being saturated and adding like a bit of a airy kind of warm sheen to this vocal, right? If you go too much, it'll sound kind of robotic. Let's check out the new Chroma Glow plugin. It just sounds like it's distorting, basically. It's brand new to Logic Pro. And this analog preamp has the least amount of drive, I think. All right, now I'm just going to add all the other plugins on my single chain, and let's listen to that. Let's check out the new Chroma Glow plugin. 
It's brand new to Logic Pro 11. All right. Now I also have another instance of Chroma Glow at the end of the single chain. And this one's set to magnetic. So it's basically a tape machine because back in the day, you would record a microphone through an analog preamp and that would be printed onto tape, right? And tape adds a tiny bit of character to the sound too. So let's listen now with the tape added. I'll bypass. Let's check out the new Chroma Glow plugin. It's brand new to Logic Pro. Right. So it adds a lot more of a high end. Now here I bypass below a thousand hertz. So that's a lot more aggressively filtered, which means it'll be a bit more transparent, but I have the drive set a lot higher, which is why it's adding those high frequencies and it's kind of giving that like poppy radio kind of sound, right? Listen again, bypass first and then on. Let's check out the new Chroma Glow plugin. It's brand new to Logic Pro 11. Yeah. So that's how I might use Chroma Glow on a vocal, maybe as an analog preamp, and then also kind of to finish it off with tape. Same thing with the piano here. I have Chroma Glow at the end of the signal chain with tape because the entire signal chain, let's say this, these are all very vintage gear, analog, you know, EQ, compression, and reverb. Maybe the reverb's also baked in from the hall that it was recorded in or whatever, but ultimately it's recorded to tape. So I'm adding just a little bit of tape here. I bypass to 315. Right, so it, it adds just a little bit of grit to it. And when it's summed up in the mix, it can sound a little bit nice and warm and a little more natural. And that's why I did that. Okay, EP again. EPs are generally distorted, right? So I added some tube distortion, which kind of emulates maybe like a tube amp almost, which was the distortion that people would have used back in the day. And I have the drive set up quite high. So that's where the grit of the EP is coming from. Let's listen to the EP alone. So here you can hear it's pretty clean. Now I, I'm gonna add it. Okay, next, moving on to the bass. Chroma Glow can be very useful on a bass guitar because in order for a bass to be heard on phone speakers, on bad speakers that don't have a lot of bass in them, you want to add saturation so that the bass frequencies are represented kind of in the two to 400 hertz range, right? That way the human ear can actually fill in the blank and pretend as if there is some kind of bass frequency that you can hear. And this is what the pro mixers are always doing on their basses so that, you know, even if you listen on your phone, you can still hear the bass line. Right. So when you add more of the saturation, you can really hear the bass, but just in moderation. And, you know, here again, I have below 120 uh, bypass. Maybe I should lower that a little bit, maybe like 80 ish. Yeah, just in a little bit of moderation, it can really help the bass pop. Now on the session drummer, I added two instances, one at the start with just a little bit of two and I have just a little bit added there, but I also have some parallel saturation. So with the drums here, I have Ascend going post pan, zero dB, so it's sending the full signal, and it's going into this chroma glow right here. What I have again right now is a retro tube, so I want something a little muddy, a little gritty, a little strong. I have it on the colorful setting, which is also gonna be a lot more gritty and strong. I have the bass bypass, so it's not too much of that muddiness and I have to drive to jacked up all the way.
I also have a low cut around 160 so that the base isn't being muddied up with the saturation, right? Only the top end of the kick, the snare, the cymbals are going to be saturated. So listening just to this. So this is being entirely added to the original signal. And what that does, it's just adding a little bit of grit. In this quasi R&B kind of drum situation, maybe this saturation isn't the best kind of stylistic choice, but I just thought I'd add some for the sake of example. One last thing before we listen to the entire thing, on a mix bus right now, I have a little bit of bus compression, also followed by some tape, right? Again, once all the tracks are recorded in the analog world, they would be summed onto one piece of tape, which would also add a little bit of saturation on its own, but not that much, right? So I have it on the clean setting so that it's as transparent as an analog emulation is supposed to be. And I only have like 24% dialed in. One could also go as far as to remove some of the mix so that, you know, you just have a teeny bit of that saturation, but I found all of it being mixed in added a nice warmth to this R&B track, okay? So first, listening to this entire thing with every instance of Chroma Glow turned off. And then we can listen to it with it on so you can hear what the tiny, tiny bits of saturation affect on the big scale. There we go. Let's check out the new Chroma Glow plugin. So what do you notice? Let me know in the comments what you notice this Chroma Glow is actually doing to the overall mix. My thoughts are that it's adding a bit of a high-end sheen because all of those high harmonic distortion frequencies are being added to the track, which is giving that more of that radio top 100 kind of sound. The saturation is not something that you really notice, but if it's not there, you kind of miss it, right? And saturation can be very important on orchestral tracks. Because again, the process of recording, you're using analog preamps, you're using magnetic tape for the recording device. Because you're using analog preamps, even in today's recording world, and oftentimes back in the day, they would use tape too. And if you use something like Spitfire Sounds, they often record to tape just to get that sound, right? So it's a very desirable, wanted sound that maybe if you're trying to go for a contemporary thing, you don't need. But as most engineers love to throw around words like, vintage, warmth, analog, you know? This is kind of what they're referring to when they're talking about that, right? These small amounts of saturation that add up and give some warmth, some depth, some fullness, and a nice sheen on top, okay? So if you have any more questions on Chroma Glow, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer for you. And this new plugin is fantastic compared to something like Decapitator or any other kind of saturation plugin that's out there. Those plugins have their own sounds, but this one has a variety of its own sounds and it's free in the stock version. So I definitely would use it. It might be a little CPU intensive. So if you don't have Apple Silicon, first of all, it won't work because you have to have Apple Silicon for it to work. But if you have a kind of lower CPU, it might start to struggle after a few instances. So just keep that in mind. You know, maybe just put it on buses like I have on the mix bus. You could even put it on instrument groups. Maybe if you have a string section, you can put all of the instruments into one mix bus and put the saturation right there. And that'll give you a similar effect with a lot more efficiency. I love to add saturation on my vocals because it adds kind of that nice radio sheen to it. So definitely recommend trying that out. Mess with the bypass below function. I think that's a really great addition that they added that something like Decapitator doesn't actually have. So a lot of the time I'd have to throw it out into a send, add an EQ before the Decapitator to filter out the lows so I'm not getting an oversaturated signal. So 
Great job, Apple. I love this new plugin. I think it's definitely going to be put to use and become a part of my saturation arsenal. Very happy with it. And to finish off the video, I'll just do a quick AB comparison where I switch, you know, every bar or so between that non-saturated and saturated version of the track. Thank you for watching the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. This has been DID Choi, and I'll see you in the next one.